a very quick note on this uh, last phrase of Wikipedia, which oh, I share because to a certain extent, but uh, for me, um, of course, when, when we speak of science, we can focus on objectified science. And of course, about that, you can debate and uh, you can register, register those debates in Wikipedia. But there is also a, a dimension of science, which is the uh, personal ability, the habit the, that the scientific uh, mind develops. And for that, you need a uh, hard training. And very often, you need to write books that nobody is going, are going to read. OK, but, but that, 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 that kind of exercise is important in order to develop your, your intellectual expertise and your intellectual path. And it, it's per, perhaps this subjective uh, element that we miss when, when we focus too much on the objective uh, content. And perhaps when we are demanding that people uh, are more critical in, in their uh, approach to science and to scientific facts and everything, what we need is that they develop those habits so more than opposing books and Wikipedia, we, we, we need to encourage both a real debate and a factual a, yeah, a controversies and everything. But we need that people, you know, read and write boring books um, because that, that, that's important for, for our intellectual development. Yeah. <laughs> So we need to ask very short questions and very short replies. Please, in the contrary, we know can, and we have a very intensive uh, um, post, uh, post, um, uh, po, po, this meeting in, in, in the afternoon. So please, and we have a minister here. So we need to conserve, the minister have no time. So we need to conserve exactly the time, the schedule. Thank you very much, sorry. Our, our speaker respond. Yes, yeah, so it's not about uh, replacing books. It's and academics, of course, have their institutions and structures, and we will always write and read boring books and publish articles in journals. That's our job and that's our role. My point was more about the public and where are the public able to access that, because that knowledge is locked up in institutions. They can't, you know, unless they're willing to pay huge amounts of money for academic journals. So it's not so much that one would have to uh, replace the other. And even with academic knowledge, I think we can be a bit more transparent about what's complicated and messy in it. And then perhaps people wouldn't have unrealistic ideas about what science uh, can achieve. Stephen? Yeah, very briefly, what's your uh, take or intuition about the forthcoming um, the successor agreement with the platforms that the EU is currently negotiating, the extension of that, uh, which is supposed to lead up to the Digital Services Act in a couple of years. <clears throat> and I don't know how much you know about the details of that, but I was just curious, given what you've said about non-compliance and all that, what's your sort of crystal ball for the future vis-a-vis -vis European regulations? Well, I think almost uh, a year ago, before the dig this time, about a year ago, almost everything you read speculating about the Digital Services Act said it will probably reverse the exemption on content liability. And many people were really surprised that that hadn't happened because you know it's pretty clear that the, the basis for that is no longer tenable. So, and as the, the lobbying power of the tech companies is quite incredible at the moment. So there's what I would like to see happen, and I think there's, there's what actually will happen. I don't think the revised code will do anything, uh, anything radical either. It is very telling that the organizations and bodies that have been given the power to monitor the code have neither the resources or research capacity to do just that. So I think your, your, your point about political will is a really interesting one. And if there is political will, you don't endow the power to monitor to something to people who can't possibly do it. 
Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. I like very much your presentation. My question is, you suggested creating a civic media. From your perspective, what is today the major difficulty in moving in that direction? Because everybody is speaking in favor of creating civic media. But in spite of all of that, nothing happens. What is, in your opinion, the reason for that? And what would you suggest on the other hand? Thank you. I think that comes back to regulation as well. And the, the regulation the regulation discussion, especially around things like disinformation, often gets bogged down in freedom of expression. We do not want policymakers and regulators deciding what people can and cannot say. They don't have to. What they can do are things like the data portability and the interoperability rules that would break the stranglehold of big tech companies. And that's across the board. It's not just about the types of platforms. It's about the, the devices that we buy where they lock people into their own systems, which is fundamentally opposed to the original ideals of the web in the first place. So if you could break those rules, then the incentives for people to try and set up new platforms just for their own community, for their city, increase massively. And people can be a member of Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, and also a member of these other groups and move their content and uh, networks quite easily. But at the moment, that's really difficult to happen. And people are locked into a Facebook universe and a Google universe. Thank you. Um, one final question, I, then I think we're back on time. Yes, short, please. Th thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Eileen, for a uh, terrific presentation. Um, on the matter of reading and the matter of, of what the book does versus what reading um, in the new information uh, communication media technologies, um, there is very, very important work. Marianne Wolf, a uh, member of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences, the main architect of the domain called Mind, Brain, and Education, has done very, very uh, important basic research using the tools of neuroimaging and cognitive neuroscience to examine the differences in a child when the child is reading a book and when the child is surfing and reading uh, online. This is a, a work that may inform um, the, uh, your, your, your reflections. Uh, two books I highly recommend, uh, Proust and the Squid by Professor Wolf, and um, the book on the reading brain that was just released by one of the major American, I can't remember which one. Uh, otherwise, thank you for your terrific uh, intervention. Thank you. And I just want to stress, I'm not at all anti books, you know, books are fantastic. And we you know, fully support uh, public libraries and people reading books, and especially children reading books. But it's about accessibility, yeah. and the opportunities that digital technologies give us, which is a different way of organizing knowledge and making it available to people, and having more egalitarian practices and allowing people to disagree in constructive ways. Um, and that doesn't have to replace what's come before, but we should explore those possibilities.